Hello, I'm Raj Kishore. I'm one of the co-chairs for this PCVS 2016 scientific session here in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm here with my fellow co-chairs, Dr. Maria Contelidis and Dr. Jay Chang. And we're here to discuss some of the highlights of this uh, ongoing scientific session. So let me begin with you, Maria. What are the, some of the most exciting signs and sessions that you, uh, you think uh, moved you? more enthusiastic about? Well, I was very excited about all of the sessions uh, this year, not just because we organized them, but I thought that the science was terrific this year, a lot of unpublished work and a lot of wonderful new ideas that were disseminated through the talks. I think by far my favorite uh, session was the IPS and the tissue um, engineering sessions. I thought that that was incredibly informative. It's very innovative. It's the next way that we're moving forward. I think using uh, the technology for cardiovascular toxicity is really important, the platform that Joe Wu is building, as well as the tissue engineering uh, models that are being used for therapeutic uh, avenues. Um, some of the other highlights I thought that were incredibly good were uh, Rich Lee's talk, who was in the uh, apoptosis and aging session, who really talked a little bit about um, how he has a novel mechanism that is leading to uh, changes in fructose update that uh, uptake that lead to diabetic cardiomyopathies, and uh, other highlights. Highlighted uh, talks include Jeff Mulkentine and Tony Rosenzweig, who both had information about concentric, eccentric type hypertrophy, as well as uh, differences between signaling pathways that lead to physiological and pathological hypertrophies. So those are some of the things that I thought were really uh, innovative this year. What moved you? Oh, uh, I just follow Maria's uh, concept that uh, it's very, very exciting uh, scientific session. Uh, I'm particularly um, excited about the new technology that can examine and see the, how the energy um, produced in the mitochondria and utilized in the concerto apparatus. And uh, Bob Barnabas can show the, uh, our community that it's, it is the conduction, not the transportation, that how energy energetics happened in the heart. And also, uh, the new technology can now, for the first time, measure the um, heart myocardial ATP utilization micromoles per gram per second. That has never happened before. So why, why the hypertrophy the heart that the population study showed the uh, sudden death uh, five folds higher than normal? Now we know because the hypertrophy the hearts uh, utilize oxygen three times more than normal, so they are operating at the brink of their reserve, and uh, that's why sudden death is higher. So this technology will bring us the research and science to the new level. Um, I'm particularly um, excited to be part of this uh, great community. I, I totally echo what uh, Maria and Jay said. Uh, there was a couple of more highlights for me. I think we are very blessed to have a 2012 Nobel Prize laureate as a keynote speaker. He really talked fantastic uh, the structure and function of GPCR, how they can be modulated to uh, create new drugs. So I was very excited about that and very blessed to have him here. And uh, also, because of my own interest, uh, the exosomes moves me. Mm -hmm. And there was a really good uh, biological session where there's just not uh, limited to the cardiac regeneration, but have number of cardiophysiological aspects, including diabetes and endothelial biology, and genesis, Andrew Baker and Sean Davidson gave a great talk from UK. And uh, in addition to that, I think uh, Maria will tell you more about it. I think we are very proud for this young investigator programs and, and uh, the focus theme of the two uh, to really guide these young people. Can you talk something about that? Sure. Um, we're really excited this year because for the first time in a long time, the BCVS has actually offered um, the highest scoring abstracts to actually present within our programs. We had 10, uh, 14 actually young uh, abstract speakers who are either junior faculty or postdocs that gave us really wonderful talks uh, during the sessions. We also had three outstanding uh, um, early career um, prize finalists that were uh, giving talks today for their um, awards. And then um, we had early career sessions that were uh, incredibly, incredibly well attended and um, I think well received. We had a particularly successful program today, which was a speed networking program, where we had about 25 faculty talking with our young uh, scientists and up and coming faculty uh, who uh, are interested in moving in the right direction in academia and, and beyond. So we were really excited to have that uh, this year. I actually uh, uh, have uh, Raj here. 
I'm particularly excited about the new information about the exosome. Then you are actually pioneer the field of the one of the pioneer in the exosome field. I'm particularly interested in the concept that the exosome as a vehicle and the modified exosome can have the cargo and the, the, the presentation that the, uh, in the peripheral blood the exosome increase or change can be a um, how the cat therapy achieved his uh, effect. So um, this makes the perfect sense how the, the precondition, post condition, and remote condition, how that works. So in the sense that you do not need to put, the, put the, the manipulation in the heart. You can put the manipulation in the thigh to make the treatment of the um, heart disease. So the use the peripheral flow as, a, as a, a pathway to deliver the vehicle and cargo to the target of organ. You probably want to comment on that. I'm particularly excited about that. I, mean, I, I share excitement, but uh, this field is really evolving. This is mm -hmm. only the tip of the iceberg that we know about these tiny shells that are so important for cell-to-cell -cell communication. And you're right, but uh, how these uh, uh, conditions can change their content is, is, is still evolving. We don't, they don't understand the biologically how the cargo is loaded. And, uh, uh, but we, I can envisage one day, they definitely will become a biomarker at least in circulation uh, because you can easily isolate from the bodily fluids and you can just characterize what the cargo is and uh, you might predict. And it, this cancer people are doing this for a long period of time, they're smarter than us, yeah. and uh, so we follow. I think it's, uh, it's a still evolving field, very exciting, but uh, we have long ways to go. So the, the dynamic of the regulation of exosome, um, different cell type and different um, expression and uh, and half life do we uh, do we uh, know that or it's uh, we are beginning to know that so but it's long way oh, very yeah. good wonderful and uh, to wrap it up I would like to thank all the participants uh, for this meeting uh, for the great science their participation and they're coming to really balmy Phoenix and I would urge everybody to join us again in 2017 in uh, Portland Oregon yes. it should be much cooler there and thank you again and uh, we so look long. forward to next year.